Hey everyone, thanks for coming to our talk, Rick and Post Morty. Everyday engineering fundamentals learned from Rick and Morty. <clears throat> uh, can you please just close the door? Yeah, thanks. So, uh, right before we begin, uh, you're probably wondering how we ended up giving this talk. So, a few months back, still energized by the talks we gave at the reversing conference, Eric and I noticed that um, the DevOps Day is called for papers opened. We thought it would be a great idea to have a talk together. At the same time, we wanted an excuse to rewatch Rick and Morty. <laughs> Eric suggested, as a joke, that we submit this talk. We even wrote... Laughs, interdimensional joy and wisdom. In the audience takeaway section. <clears throat> Fast forward a few weeks, you can imagine our surprise... And fear. ...when we received the confirmation email. So, the following 20, 20 minutes are the outcome of this joke. We hope you uh, enjoy. Here are some disclaimers. We're not Rick and Morty experts. We're just addicts. All the opinions represented here are our own. And the most important disclaimer, we will not spoiler season four in any way. Don't worry. So, let's get to talk about who we two are. This fabulous thing here is Daniel Korn, an engineering manager, a Maccabi Tel Aviv follower, a GIF hunter, and a meme crafter, and an absolute phenom of everything that he does. Thanks, Eric. The legendary Eric Tsaadi, a rare combination of Swedish and Yemenite, a team leader, a Jachnun master, and a dead puns advocate. Thank you. So, uh, we two work at Big Panda, and we have a large uh, customer base who has Knox, and basically we're their eyes on production. So, needless to say, uptime and things like that are kind of religious to us. And uh, our experience in working on scaling problems, long on-call shifts, and, and sleepless nights are also reflected in the lessons we're going to talk about here. In a show of hands, who here seen Rick and Morty? Ooh. Okay, that's great. So for, for those of you who haven't watched the show, Rick and Morty is an American animated science fiction sitcom that follows the misadventures of mad cynical scientist Rick Sanchez and his good-hearted but fretful grandson, Morty Smith. They split their time between domestic life and interdimensional adventures. So for those of you who didn't raise your hand, it's okay. But you're probably wondering if this talk is even relevant for you. Well, yes. Now, uh, putting cynicism aside, we believe that if you look bad, uh, past the crazy animation and bad language, there's a lot to be learned from this amazing TV show. So in this talk, we'll cover the engineering lessons we learned from Rick and Morty. Let's try to think about Rick and Morty as people we meet in our day-to-day -day life. Rick Sanchez is a senior principal AI architect <clears throat> He doesn't have LinkedIn, and he will not have one. He is known to be rude, condescending, unapproachable, and he won't speak with anyone from HR. He still writes COBOL, and he can configure Kubernetes without using any YAML files. No one knows how long he's been at the company, but the general rule of thumb is that Rick can solve anything. And this is Morty. Morty is a second-year grad student who got lucky and grabbed an intern position as a junior DevOps engineer. Morty thinks that he's a hard worker with a lot of potential. And he recently did a Docker tutorial, but he doesn't get how everybody gets to be an expert but just by doing so. I think it's time. Let's get on to the lessons. Jeez, thanks, Eric. Let's start with something fundamental. In Season 1, Episode 9, the Smith family are sitting at a breakfast table. Rick finishes tinkering with the robot, and when that robot comes to life, Rick tells it to pass the butter. The robot then asks Rick, What is my purpose? Rick responds, You pass butter. The robot is having an existential crisis. It looks down at its wheels and says, Oh my god. To which Rick responds, Yeah, welcome to the club, pal. This scene has become so iconic, it is now a meme template. <laughs> when, we watched, when we watched this scene, it reminded us something fundamental. The very first idea of the Unix philosophy. 
write programs that do one thing and do it well. If that sounds familiar, that's probably because um, it's practically the definition of uh, today's microservices architecture. But back to our fundamental. We've all been there. We start with a simple script that automates one operation. Then as time goes by, another need arises, and we almost naturally tend to just add it to our script, <laughs> usually by creating a code smell. After a few more iterations, our code is so loosely related, complex, and uh, non-maintainable. So the first takeaway from this, uh, from this talk would be to resist the temptation of having an all-in-one piece of code. Thanks, Eric. You're welcome. And write programs that do one thing and do it well. Or in short... Dada div, dog. So in uh, season three, episode six, one of the most iconic uh, episodes ever, uh, the Smith family is scheduled for a therapy session following Jerry and Beth's divorce. Uh, Rick does not want to go to therapy, but is too proud to actually admit it. So as an excuse, he turns himself into a pickle. Uh, Beth finds out about this and is very angry, and she takes with her the anti-pickle potion that Rick prepared to turn himself back normal again. In the, the spirit of the rest of the crazy show, a cat shows up and pushes Rick at the pickle into the sewers. There in the sewers, Rick uses the most unthinkable resources to overcome his pickle, like controlling the limbs of a cockroach. He, <clears throat> he goes on, overtaking the body of a rat, using whatever scraps he can find in the sewer to slowly build himself up, a full-on automated weapon system, and finally, he gets out of the sewer. Pick a Rick. He does it in a, in a fashion that, that's worthy of an 80s action movie. And uh, it's very, very impressing. Uh, that takes us to our first segue. And I forgot to do this. You didn't forget. It's OK. Uh, that you should start small and build up. Uh, basically, if you're handed a huge feature, you should break that down into feasible milestones that build upon each other as building blocks. You should start small, use whatever you can around you, and be lean. Uh, the, this episode has so much beauty in it, and due to the time uh, restrictions we have in this presentation, we can't include them all. But we'll just heal the art for you all uh, to say that finally, Rick ended up in therapy as a pickle. And that uh, takes us to the other uh, takeaway here. If you have something that you're uncomfortable with, right, that could be a feedback session, a salary discussion, or even a pull request from that really, really grumpy senior, you should probably just deal with it instead of turning yourself into a pickle. Yeah, you can take it off now. Yeah, I will. <laughs> Great. God, that was hot. In season one, episode five, the Smith family asks Rick for solutions to some of, them, of their mundane problems. Rick gives the family the Mythics box, a gadget. Okay, thanks. You promise you won't do it. Uh, yeah, sure. A gadget capable of summoning helpers named Mr. Mythics. These blue helpers uh, exist only to solve the task at hand, and once it is solved, they disappear. Rick assures the family that the creatures are happy to die and warns them to keep their tasks simple. Unlike Beth and Summer, Jerry has a simple task. He wants to uh, get two uh, knocks off his golf game. Jerry struggles to improve in golf despite training from his uh, mystics. He's, already, he's ready to give up, but then his mystics, who can't stop existing until he uh, completes the task, decides to summon another mystics to help. You get where this is going. It's not long before Jerry is surrounded by dozens of frustrated mystics who starts losing their sanity because they haven't lived that long. Now, um, if you think about it, by summoning more and more creatures, the mystics chose the scale-out or horizontal scale strategy. It basically means that instead of making one VM or machine bigger, you create a cluster and add more and more instances to it. It became common with the move to the cloud and the microservices architecture. Now, uh, while it, can be, um, it has many advantages, the scale-out strategy comes with a price. Um, 
That price is that you need to rethink your architecture and sometimes even make changes to your source code. So there are limitations like network or data distribution, maybe even the application logic. And so the takeaway that we want you to uh, have from this episode is that you should that you should think twice before you just scale out. It might over-engineer or complex some simple solutions. At some point, the mystics start to blame each other and argue over the correct solution. <clears throat> the situation turns into a, into a brawl. The mystics tear each other apart while summoning more and more mystics to join the fight. So most companies have uh, major, at least few major uh, outages throughout the year. We all have them, we can prevent all of them, but we can definitely learn from them. A common way to do that is by having post-mortem meetings. The general idea is to bring the team together to discuss what happened, why it happened, meaning the root cause, how the team responded, and how we can prevent it in the future. Not such an easy task, right? Well, from our experience of countless of outages, the best way and the most effective way uh, doing that without any blame games is to practice blameless postmortems. You, yeah, <laughs> oh, thanks, Eric. You uh, assume best intentions without identifying or punishing whoever screwed up. The participants don't need to worry about getting demoted or fired, and the focus is on continuous improvements decreasing the chances of ignoring incidents in the future for the fear of blame, and uh, creating an open culture of learning. In your next post-mortem meeting, try to remind everyone in the room to avoid any finger pointing. In uh, season one, episode six, Morty wants to impress the love of his life. So, naturally, he asks Rick for a love potion to help him. Rick cocks together a quick MVP of things like Vold DNA and a lot of crazy stuff, and uh, hands Morty the potion. Morty then asks Rick, Are there any dangers or side effects? Needless to say, Rick dismisses him condescendingly, and only after Morty leaves, Rick remembers one very important disclaimer. In if any case this uh, potion is exposed to the flu, all hell will go down. And Morty then takes this to a flu ball a dance dedicated to preventing the flu where people came sick with the flu. And that per turns people into Morty cra crazy zombies that love Morty and fight over him and almost tear him apart. Rick notices this and creates another potion, basically built on the previous patch, this time using praying mantis DNA because what the heck. And uh, this will fix things for sure. Well, it didn't. It turned the entire planet into mantis mutations that love Mori so desperately, as you can see in this image. Uh, Rick, in the spirit of the rest of the show, another crazy patch uh, is thrown together by Rick, and this time they screw up the entire dimension, turning them into unrecognizable m monsters called Cronenbergs. And this takes us to the first takeaway for this. Uh, yeah, uh, for this episode, and that is you should probably avoid side effects. Whether if it's in your infrastructure, where your builds, runs, jobs, or whatever you're doing, they should always be clean and sterile and not have any side effects like a previous database or file systems that fill up. And the same thing with your code, right? Even if you're writing the simplest function, you should probably not include that utils logger or whatever that might slack your, uh, smack your uh, code with unwanted side effects like CPU or IO bound things. Um, <clears throat> After a long night, Rick and Morty sits on the roof, sees their entire planet, Cronenberg, and they recognize they screwed things up. There's nothing they can do right now. And that takes us to another uh, takeaway, which is you should probably know when to start fresh, right? Standing on the shoulder of giants and, and you know not reinventing the wheel is a very good thing. But if you're building patch upon patch upon hellish maintenance, uh, unmaintainable uh, legacy code, you're probably doing it wrong. This uh, episode ends very uh, specially. Uh, basically, Rick finds an alternate universe where uh, this love potion was fixed miraculously. And at the same moment, that alternate universe, Rick and Morty, just killed themselves. So they uh, are, uh, are, 
the infamous C-137 dimensions Rick and Morty that we're following simply slips into that dimension, buried themselves in their own backyard, and assumed their reality. And the last segue for this episode is, you should probably know when to start fresh. <clears throat> Sorry. Uh, if you're working at 2 a.m. on a production outage and you're trying to solve things, you should probably stop and think uh, uh, because you do mistakes right there. Remember we talked about Rick being a senior and Morty a junior? Well, in a way, Rick is mentoring Morty throughout their adventures, right from the first episode. Here are some of our thoughts and insights about mentoring. Mentorship is a ride. It has its ups and it has its downs. It's a hard work, not rewarding at most times, taking every ounce of your patience. As a mentor, you should push your junior to their limits. And it just might boost their confidence and give them a sense of accomplishment. And as a mentor, you'll be surprised how much you can learn from juniors. It's much more than a different uh, approach, a fresh set of advice. It's a way of thinking that you've already forgotten. Sometimes, even the smallest gesture, just being there for your mentee, can change their entire reality. So, in short, uh, the last takeaway for this talk is mentoring. You should be encourage that in your organization. It will help your organization mature. It will spread the knowledge and empower your employees. So, Daniel. I think uh, it's time for a recap. Yeah. You should do one thing and do it well. Whenever there's a big problem, start small and build up. Work with what you got. You should deal with whatever is not comfortable for you. Scale out isn't always the answer. You should probably avoid side effects, preferably using immutability. Try to always practice blameless postmodems. You should know when to call it a night and start fresh. And the importance of mentoring for you and your organization. So Daniel, how do you think it went? I'm not so sure. <laughs> well, uh, I hope you all enjoyed. We had a blast. Uh, if you have any more questions, we'll be at the Big Panda booth. Uh, questions about us, Big Panda, or Rick and Morty. And thank you, everyone. Thank you very much. Woo!